Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Uh, I don't know about you, but I love uh, asking questions like, hey, what's your favorite ice cream? If you're going to be an animal, what would you be? If you could go on vacation anywhere with no budget, where would you go? Uh, all those questions are fun, and I love getting to know people that way. Uh, one of the questions, though, that, that sometimes is a little harder to answer is, hey, if you had a day or two left to live, how would you spend it? And Tim McGraw gave us a take on some ideas uh, several years ago when he gave us the Live Like You Were Dying song that, uh, that talked about some of those ideas in there. But I think most of us have an idea of what we would want to do. And maybe for you, it's about family. Maybe it's about friends. It's about people. Maybe it's about trying to squeeze in as much uh, activity and accomplishments as you can and trying to check off some things at the end of the list. Um, but... I think something we maybe miss sometimes as we think about the life of Jesus is the fact that, that he knew what was coming. He knew about the, the crucifixion. He knew about the sacrificial death he would have to enter into on our behalf. He knew what was coming uh, and choose to, chose to move forward in that. See, in Matthew chapter 26, we kind of enter those, those final uh, moments in the life of Jesus and enter some of those really significant moments that he entered into. But at the beginning of this, we're told this in Matthew 26, 1 through 5. It says, Now when Jesus finished saying all these things, he turned and said to the disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. So he not only knew when it was, or what was happening, but also when it would be happening as well. And then the chief priests and elders of the people gathered in the palace of the highest priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now, Jesus didn't have a listening device. He, he, he wasn't, you know, uh, connected to some CIA surveillance where he knew that the Sanhedrin was talking about this. But he knew because he is the God of the universe. He knew because he knew all along that this was his plan for his life. And I think it's so important to think about the fact that Jesus knew. And what did he do next? Well, very next we see uh, that they were dining and a woman came and, and, and worshipped him and he honors her even though she is a sinful person and, and she uh, wastes money by pouring perfume on his feet and anointing him and he honors her worship. He continues to serve the disciples and, and, and by washing their feet, this lowly, embarrassing, gross task of the first century. And then he turns and challenges them to do the same as, a, as a, an example to go and serve and be willing to do the lowest task in order to serve and care for others. He, he established communion as a way to say, hey, remember the sacrifice that I'm about to do for you, something that we today still do as a way to remember and honor and worship him. But he did some other hard things too. Part of him worship and, or, or part of him serving the disciples and washing their feet was also him washing Judas's feet. Someone he knew full well was going to betray him in the coming hours. Someone that he knew was not there with pure motives. He also spoke of Peter's upcoming denial, how Peter would deny him three times before the, the dawn of the next day. Something that, that would cause him grief, but showed Peter preemptive grace in that. You know, he, he continued in this. He prioritized prayer and coming before God. But at the end of the day, what we see is Jesus knew and he willingly went to the cross. And I think that fact alone is something we need to let sit in. He didn't get caught off guard by this. He wasn't surprised by the events of his crucifixion. He knew what was coming and he chose to do it. For you, for me, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and finds salvation in him, he chose to do that willingly. So I pray that that, that strikes you today. Of just understanding his knowledge of what was coming up and understanding his willingness to go through such excruciating and awful events to give his life for you and for me so that we might be forgiven of our sins and find salvation in him. He loved us enough to do that. He loved you enough to willingly spend the last few days of his life serving and demonstrating love for people and walking the events up to the cross and his own crucifixion. 
So today I want to challenge you, if you're a follower of Jesus, take some moments at the conclusion of this episode and just reflect on that reality that Jesus chose to go to the cross for you. And maybe spend some time in prayer just thanking him for that. Thanking him for his sacrifice, his willingness, his boldness, his courage to do so, his incredible sacrifice on your behalf. If you're not a follower of Jesus, I hope that this gives you a picture of who he is and what his character and nature is. He's not looking to get something from you. He's, he's looking to gift you with the most wonderful gift that could ever be communicated, and that is a sacrificial love that, that offers you forgiveness and hope and eternal life in him. Because that is what he chose willingly to do, knowing that it was coming, knowing that uh, it would not be easy, uh, knowing that it would be incredibly hard and painful, but he loved us enough to move forward with that. Hope this is an encouragement. Hope that this encourages you to draw close to Jesus with gratitude today. Have a great day, Calvary.